Yeah, well, let's hope that uh, Lennon Donovan takes fewer beer baths while he's taking a corner kick down in Mexico. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> but uh, I, think... I don't know if that'll ever happen, but we can, we can dream. <laughs> well, yeah. you know, and that's really kind of funny, too, because it really seems like, uh, you know, I watched Univision for a portion of the Gold Cup and watching Landon Donovan do a full interview on Univision in Spanish, uh, it actually makes sense why, you know, a lot of Mexican fans have a love hate relationship with him and they love him they like him because yeah. you know he connects with them but at the same sense he plays for the united states so right of course yeah interesting but, which is that which is just another example of you know the rivalry being broken down yeah you know so i agree i agree yeah. but let's talk some good news though too because there was some good news and the probably the one that seemed to stand out the most in the press was uh, the reemergence if you will, of Freddie Adu. I mean, is it safe to say, I don't know if it is ever safe to say this, but it, this time that Freddie is really, truly back to stay, I mean, is he really seriously back in this picture to stay now for the next, you know, eight, ten, I, you know, years or so? I would think that there would be demands on him now to find a bigger club yeah. to go to. I think he's gotten here. A nice slice of humble pie, mm -hmm. you know, and he had everything handed to him for a long time, and he'd been anointed the next greatest thing yep. uh, since he's been 14, and yep. and to go into basically play in the Turkish men's league, you know, where anybody can play, I guess, yeah. uh, <laughs> uh, was probably a rude awakening about where how far he's fallen from grace. So, yeah. you know, for him to get called back in the fold, I think was a stroke of genius by Bob Bradley um, to start him in the in the final uh, mm -hmm. was another stroke. I mean, I assume he was been training well. Yeah. Um, and had earned that uh, that opportunity. I know that Bob doesn't hand over starting spots very easily. Um, so, you know, it's a credit to him for having the right attitude. You know, I trained with him a number of times in, in national team camps, and mm -hmm. I remember distinctly in the January camp before the 2006 World Cup where we, guys are still vying for the, the bubble spots. Mm. We did this 20-minute run, and he was behind our assistant coaches oh, you know, running. Yeah. And I'm like, dude... You know, are you, is this real? Are you real? Is this a real person that wants to play in a World Cup? I just couldn't, it was hard for me to process, you know, because yeah. I would, I died to get on that World Cup roster, and this guy just thinks it's going to be handed to him. So yeah. it's clear he's come a long way. All the stuff he's saying in the press, uh, everything that I read, uh, and then what I hear about from other guys is that he's, his head's on straight, and, you know, hopefully he can continue to build on what he did uh, yesterday. However, I just hope that, there's some consistency to it, you know. Right. It's, we've right. already seen the ups and downs of Freddie Adu. Can he continue now to just have this this ascendance to right. keep going upwards? As if, I mean, obviously, it's going to be some little dips, but can we continue to see a better version of Freddie Adu game in and game out? Exactly. We don't want him to get on the high of one of those dips and then think it's all good now. Because I've been right. a critic, um, as you just mentioned, uh, Brett's been a critic. We've all been critics of Freddie Adu saying, hey, um, we've all heard reports back from clubs, and you aren't busting your ass like you should be um, to to uh, get to that next level. And it's nice to see that maybe this is the first step for him uh, to kind of reclaiming that spot. But at this, in the same way, you know, the other good news for us is we didn't have Stu Holden there last night. And right. I'm sure Mexico could say, well, we didn't have these other five guys because they ate it tainted steaks or hamburger or whatever but right. at the same time we didn't have who could possibly be one of our best future players uh, he's been brilliant for bolton when he's been healthy and so that's another uh, good bit of positive news that uh, you know we can we can store in our memory banks right and obviously Stuart holden would be a welcome addition you know he's a guy that can make the big play but he's also a good complimentary guy he makes the guys around him better um, and so, obviously, he's a missing piece. But I thought Alejandro Bedoya and Tasha Question did a pretty good job, mm -hmm. you know, filling in kind of that void that Stu left. And yeah, but it still kind of lends itself to, you know, where's our depth? You know, yeah. I mean, across the board, that's great. We're missing Stu Holden, and maybe, yeah, maybe he made would have made a difference. Mm -hmm. But was it, is it enough for us to get over that that hill and to beat a very very talented? Mexican team. I just don't know if it would have been enough. But yeah, I don't either. Who's yeah. to say? I mean, I'm, I'm a huge Stu Holden fan, but I just don't know on the day if we were going to beat that Mexican team. Yeah, I agree with you. Um, I'm trying. <laughs> I'm trying to stay positive here, Jimmy. <laughs> oh but, no! I mean, I'm, like I said earlier, I'm, I'm 
I'm super positive. And then yeah. that generational yeah. stuff comes and goes. I mean, yeah, I like I said, with the Landon and, and Beasley and on Yewu, we were better than the, the yeah. Mexicans for the last eight, eight to ten years. I mean, we were we had their their number. Yeah. Um, and they knew it. And then you know, it started to shift. They got some of the younger players to come around, and now they've got a little bit of the momentum. But yeah, that's going to go. That's going to come and go. I'm not really worried about it. What I do like, though, the silver lining of it all is that it's highlighted some weaknesses. You know, whether it's from the coaching staff down to the players, down to our talent pool, and yeah. this is something we need to address. And right. you know, the U.S. Soccer's done a good job of bringing Claudia Arena in to start really looking over, seeing the the technical side and the youth side of how we can make that happen and, and be more consistent so that we're producing our own Chicharitos and Dos Santos's and oh, Landon yeah. Donovan in every cycle and not just every other cycle. Right. Um, and so these things make that stuff happen faster. If we had won that game yesterday, then it's kind of glosses over the same as some of the abysmal performances that we saw or some of the weaknesses that we have. But mm-hmm. now that we lost and we lost in the fashion that we did, it forces us to address these issues earlier and, and I'm a big fan of that because then U.S. soccer is going to be moving uh, quicker to make 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 us a better program. Yeah, and and you know you mentioned Gooch, and my thought was we didn't get a sniff of Gooch this whole tournament, and I understand there might be some lingering injury issues, but um, is his time up? You know, I haven't seen Gooch play in a while. Um, obviously, the Spain game, but nobody looked good in the Spain game. He just doesn't look like he's moving the same. It's, yeah. You know, and, you know, if Gooch isn't moving the same, I mean, obviously, he's a solid soccer player, and his feet and, and his soccer decisions and his soccer IQ have grown exponentially over the last six, seven years. But his athleticism is his biggest strength, and if he doesn't have that or if he doesn't feel comfortable moving, then uh, the game's just going to be a lot harder for Gooch. And, and yeah. you know, I wish him the best. Obviously, he's a super talent. But, right. but if he's lacking probably where he gets his confidence from, you know, I mean, there's certain things as players with anything. I'm sure with what you do and whatever, you know, you, you're confident with certain parts of your game and certain parts of who you are. And if you aren't as confident with some of that, and that might be, you know, his knee or his leg or his athleticism mm-hmm. or how he moves, yeah. then that's going to affect everything else. And, and I think maybe that's what he's going through right now. And, yeah. you know, obviously I'm speculating. I'm, I'm definitely way outside the bubble, uh, not a deep inside like I used to be. But, mm-hmm. but I know how it goes well enough to know that, you know, there's some issue there, and obviously he's not playing well enough to warrant Bob's consideration. So, yeah, you know, now give him the summer off, give him some more time to rest that knee, and hopefully he'll get some more club time, uh, time with his club team for next season, and hopefully he'll be a valuable guy, a contributor for us in qualifying. I hope so. And you know, we're down to our yeah. last couple questions here, but, um, you know, you talked about Dolo. I thought Dolo, uh, Steve was fabulous the whole tournament. I thought he was, you know, kind of our all star. Uh, but another guy that I thought might be a mainstay right up till the next World Cup, and I thought, you know, as you said, had some erratic moments, but for the most part was solid as a rock and worked his ass off the whole tournament uh, for the most part was Jermaine Jones. And uh, do you do you see him, you know, continuing to be a part of this U.S. squad right up to the next World Cup? Yeah, I don't see why you wouldn't. Obviously, uh he makes these little plays during the game where you can see his quality. Yeah. You know, I thought he didn't make enough of those against Mexico. Sometimes I feel like him and Michael Bradley are the same kind of player. Yeah. Um, and I think in the middle of midfield, some a uh, little bit of uh, contrast would help the situation a little bit, mm-hmm. where one guy can hunt and the other guy can, can kind of stay at home. And to give you a perfect example, I think Colorado Rapids have Pablo Mastriani and Jeff mm-hmm. Lorenzowitz, who play the center midfield. Mm-hmm. You would think... On paper, they're the same kind of guy, but yeah, they're not. Right. Jeff Lewinsowitz stays home, kind of gets the ball more of the playmaker from deep, and Pablo just hunts the ball and tries to start the counterattack. And I think the U.S. would, would be better off if they had that kind of tandem where you had a, a mm-hmm. guy that could really sit and hold and, and be more of a link-up play, and then another guy that just hunts and sniffs stuff out. And I just feel like Jones and, and Bradley are the same kind of player. And mm-hmm. maybe Stu Holden would fill that gap, and he is a little bit more like a Jeff Lewinsowitz, so he can hold, he can find a spot to pick the gaps, mm-hmm. and he can just keep Michael on the leash, but keep him close enough within your start not but kind of unleash him to go around the field and, and break up plays, but that there's still somebody centrally that can get the ball and make a difference and, and keep the play moving from side to side to keep it if we need to, or can go forward and make the gaps and just pull the strings, you know, and I just don't yeah. know if we have that guy consistently. I mean, I think it comes and goes with different players. Sometimes it's Landon that does that. Mm-hmm. Sometimes it is Michael. Sometimes it is Jermaine, but, but it's just not one guy, and I feel like we had that. We had it with John O'Brien, Claudia Arena, and we're missing mm-hmm. that guy. And until we yeah. do get him, 
uh, I don't still think our, we're just going to be as efficient with the ball as we can be. Right. Last question. Um, the 4 2 Three one. You what? No, you know what? If they get offered me the job, I just don't know if I could take it right now. <laughs> That's what you're gonna. I just don't know if I'm seasoned enough yet. Well, you know, Brett and I. All the pressure, everything. Just like. <laughs> Brett and I are going to approach you at some point about coming the uh, manager for the soon to be hopefully announced new Indianapolis MLS club but that'll that's down the road Jimmy so let's not press the okay. issue too much but Fair <laughs> enough. four two the four two three one you know for so long we've sat around here and said okay that's it's the four four you know two or the four four one one the four two three one at least offensively because on defense we seem to drop back to some sort of modified form of a four four two um, but the four two three one, you know, you know, it looked fine. It looked like it was really, it, it worked well at least for the first twenty three minutes of the last game and the game before it. I'm going to stop you, right? I think that any formation works well if everybody understands their role. Yeah. If you have one person who's not really sure of it or doesn't feel comfortable in a position or what the, what's expected out of them, then there's no formation that's going to work or, you know, a team that has a good IQ like Mexico is going to exploit that. Yeah. Um, you know, I remember one time we played an 05 World Cup under Bruce where we played a 3-3-3-1 <laughs> and people mm. probably thought it was the craziest thing ever, but we had a bunch of guys on the field. It was me, Eddie Pope, Chris Armas. Uh, I was shooting my own home there. John, <laughs> John O'Brien, uh, Land, just guys that just, you tell them what they do, what, what's expected out of that position and they can just go out there and do it. There yeah. isn't, this gray area, and I and and I think that with any formation, with any team that runs a formation, if everybody understands their role and how they're supposed to move offensively and defensively, then formations kind of get thrown out the window a little mm -hmm. bit. So uh, I think that he put out a lineup yesterday where everybody kind of understood what the game plan was and where they were supposed to be, and that's why it looked as good as it did. But yeah. I, I still was disappointed that we absorbed as much as we we expected. I just thought we could have played a little bit higher line, but as we kind of gave up chances, we dropped back farther and farther and farther, and then it looked like we were playing against Spain where we just parked it up on the 18. And Things like... Uh...